as ranchers need to be more experimental. We need to see our station or ranch as a lab. Feed that microbiology. How? Well, extending the green season and having more diversity. So you're you always gonna have a green plant feeding that microbiology. So the point is, effective rainfall is don't tell me how much rain you get, how much rain you were able to infiltrate to keep it for the plants. My name is Alejandro Carrillo. We are uh, here at the Latrobe st uh, station uh, near Long Ridge in Australia. Uh, five years ago, I had the opportunity to meet virtually uh, Jody Brown, one of the owners of the ranch. And Jody contacted me last year about coming to Australia to give a talk uh, and participate on this workshop. So I said, yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh, we're very excited to be here, uh, really, this environment is so similar to, to our environment. Actually, I can tell you that you close your eyes and I take you to my ranch, you will, you will think that it's still, you're still here. My name's Jodie Brown and um, we're on Inungai country. Um, this is Arlington Park, which is our family, family's cattle station, along with Latrobe. And last night, we just had the first uh, day and evening of the Regenerative Rangelands uh, event for 2023. Protecting the places that we love and improving landscapes. You know, that these things go hand in hand whether you're from an environmental or conservation background or if you live on the land. Um, it's just trying to find that common ground and sharing enough knowledge and information to actually be able to do a better job of it. Um, so that was really special for me. At least 10 years ago, I think, I stumbled across just before and after pictures and fence line pictures in some brittle environments. And I thought, wow, if that's what you can do just by changing the way that you manage livestock, then, um, you know, why don't we give that a go? And so I started looking, I was like, well, who's doing this kind of stuff in these drier zones? And I just happened to ask someone that I knew. She said, Oh, I know these ranches uh, from the Chihuahuan Desert in Mexico. Do you want to talk to them? <laughs> I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> Not what, it wasn't what I was expecting, but Dad and I had a Skype chat with Alejandro and um, another rancher from that area, Tavo. And, um, and I think it was the thing that really, you know, that was the thing that really got Dad in. We started looking at YouTube and podcasts, but I think the, the biggest thing was when she says, oh, I've got a couple of ranches from Mexico or whatever, Skype session. Yeah. And we talked to Alejandro yeah. Yeah. and realised that it all comes back to the soil and it's all about the microbes. I never give a thought to the soil until I went down this regen track and he's, he's got green grass most of the year where he never had green grass before. It might be brilliant green, but you know, it's just a win-win situation. Most of the people in the world are good people. They want to see the planet thrive. They want to eat tucker that's produced in a way that's good for the planet. Our ranch uh, station is in the Chihuahuan Desert in Northern Mexico. That land that we graze cattle, actually it was beautiful grasslands, but through time and the kind of uh, overgrazing and uh, continuous grazing has been getting degraded. But now with the, the tools that we have nowadays, uh, with the knowledge, with the tools, with holistic management, regenerative ranching, we're being able to, what we call green the desert. We're excited to bring that know-how here in Australia where they have similar challenges, similar uh, very large deserts and to bring actually hope to the, to the ranchers here uh, that something can be done. We are very excited about the results we have had uh, up there uh, regarding the profitability of the ranch. Because as we say, you know, we cannot save the world if we, if we don't save ourselves first. So the first thing we try to do is how can we lower the cost of carrying a cow per year for the ranchers? And also how we can 
how we can actually produce more uh, nutrient-dense food uh, while we are in sync with nature. For us, it was very important to know the, the know-how, how to do this regen ranching, because we can actually work in sync with nature, respecting all the wildlife that is there, not only respecting, but also promoting more wildlife. We, we, we have this kind of management that actually promotes life. Everything is welcome at the ranch, and it's life underground, and it's life above ground, and it's life in all shapes and forms, including the communities that we're trying to rebuild. I wanted to learn and net network more and build community around, I guess, regenerative principles, but particularly how we apply them in the rangelands, so semi-arid and arid zones. Um, there's some spectacular landscapes out here, but it's a really unique um, kind of challenge to be managing landscapes in these environments. And yeah, I thought it'd be great to pull together some really remarkable people, <laughs> get them all together out in the paddock and around a campfire at night. And um, I'm just kind of blown away actually by the people that said yes and turned up. Knowledge is such a powerful thing and I definitely feel clearer about you know some steps that I can take to have real impact on the health of my land but also economic impact in my business. I'm quite new on this journey learning these concepts in the depth and detail that they've been going through here uh, and I'm quite introverted. I like working so I usually stay home but Jodie's a fabulous networker and I knew I had to come here um, because I knew there'd be other like-minded people. And it is, it is really reassuring, it's confidence building. To know that uh, having a go at these sort of things, I'm not the only one and people are just a phone call away or you know, you can invite them over for a cuppa and go for a drive up the paddock and say, what do you think about this? How's that looking to you? Am I doing it right? And um, yeah, that's really, uh, having that support is really important. Even small improvements in this landscape, if they're done across huge properties, can have a real impact. Supporting these farmers helps the landscape, helps the environment, helps uh, our food security and, and we're there to support them. And I think for a lot of people who grow up in the city, including myself, our experience of nature is national parks. And we're told that national parks are places where people aren't and they're wild, they're wilderness. And that's where nature happens. And that's when nature happens, when we take people out of the landscape and we only have native plants and animals. And in reality, that idea of wilderness is a bit of a myth. And it's a bit of a bit of a colonial myth as well, because um, in reality, there were pretty much no landscapes across the whole world that, that didn't have people in them and didn't have people who were uh, involved in the landscape, part of the landscape, and in, in many places, including right across Australia, managing the landscape. Well, let's go through the First Nations lens of when I see my big garden, um, which is what I see as our landscape. And then for us, it's also woven into, when we talk about that, we're at one with our environment. So if our environment's sick, we're not well either. And so we do a practice that we call Nupachi Nupachi. You give, it gives back. And so you give me, I give you. I think we regenerated country all the time when we walked through for thousands of years and being very mindful of that process. But I think it was also a clear understanding of our neighbourhood and who was in that neighbourhood and what their responsibility was and that sharing of knowledge in that space. So I think that's what I've really enjoyed about coming out here um, and, and um, being a part of this where there is a, there's a combination and a connection of scientists, of landholder and of course First Nations knowledge. And I think it's exciting and an exciting time as we reset Australia into the future and reimagine what it was like um, through those ancient practices, especially um, from our First Nations ancestors um, and what they did. 
have to say I've had an amazing couple of days with some pretty extraordinary people. We've spent time um, sharing stories about people's connection to country. Often you might think that people who come from the conservation sector and people who come from the grazing sector may not have a lot in common. But in fact, when you scratch the surface and you spend some time talking with each other, I really feel strongly that we have this shared need to respond to these big changes that are happening in our world from global heating, which is warming up the planet, making it really hard for people to graze and farm in our country and hurting a lot of people. And we know that we've got an extinction crisis of wildlife and that the health of our country is going down rather than up. So we share, that's a shared problem that we've got. And the thing that I've just found absolutely exhilarating is that these people are working together and, and exploring ideas about how they can bring diversity back into their properties, how they can manage their properties in ways that increases wildlife on, um, on these stations and, and improve the profitability of their enterprises and the resilience of uh, their properties, their families and their communities for not just a cattle productivity outcome but for a diversity of ecosystem and species outcome. And this, each property is different. We're talking about properties that can be like 45,000 hectares. They're huge areas of country and they're different depending on the region. So it's exciting to think there are a bunch of sort of like crazier scientists who are out there practicing and trying new things to try and create more life, more nature and healthier um, properties. Um, I think that's a really hopeful and exciting story. The regeneration movement, uh, and which is turning into a rapidly growing phase in agriculture, which is just wonderful to see, and, and to be a part of that process and help share stories and listen and, and network is really exciting. Just to see where where this is going to go and particularly with the world focus on on the environment now it's it's more important than ever to sell tell and expand the stories of people doing wonderful things to restore landscapes